All right, making and begetting. We, this is chapter one of book four. We're finally here. And we're gonna continue into some really heavy duty stuff. Hello everyone. Um, I'm so glad you're still along for the ride. Um, all right, let's jump right into this. I wanna do this, um, what I'm gonna do, there's a ton in this one chapter, but I wanna try and keep these these about five minutes um, per chapter because otherwise they're going to be really long and we got quite a ways to go. So uh, making and begetting. I want to read the first part of the chapter and then the last page. Excuse me. Okay. Everyone has warned me not to tell you what I'm going to tell you in this last book. I love that. They all say the ordinary reader does not want theology. Give him plain, practical religion. I have rejected their advice. I do not think the ordinary reader is such a fool. Theology means the science of God. Now I want to pause here. Did you know that? Did you know that that's what theology is? The science of God? The study of God? I tell you, when I, when I, when I saw that... Um, It, it's, it's a shame that we see theology as something dull and boring because real theology should be nothing but dull and boring because we're talking about God. Um, but one question I want to, let me, let me finish this and then I want to ask, I want to just highlight the question that Lewis asks. Theology means to study the science of God and I think any man who wants to think about God at all, would like to have the clearest and most accurate idea about him, which are available. You are not children. Why should you be treated like children? So let me ask, is that true about you? Do you want the most clear and accurate idea about God? If your answer is yes, then good for you. You're in the right place. Okay, now let's go to the last page. Okay, now he's going to highlight something here which is very important. And this really is, um, this is, this is key. Um, because it, it, this, this really identifies the difference between natural birth and spiritual birth. Let me just get into it and read it. <clears throat> but what man in his natural condition has not got is spiritual life. The higher and different sort of life that exists in God. We use the same word for both. But if you thought that both, but if you thought that both must, must therefore be the same sort of thing, that would be like thinking that the greatness of space and the greatness of God were the same sort of greatness. In reality, the difference between biological life and spiritual life is so important that I'm going to give them two distinct names. The biological sort, which comes to us through nature, and which, like everything else in nature, is always tending to run down and decay so that only so that it can only be kept up by incessant subsidies from nature and in the form of air, water, food, etc. is bios. The spiritual life which is in God from all eternity and which made the whole natural universe is Zoe. Now that's so important, okay? so important bios has to be for bios has to be sure to be sure bios has to be sure a certain shadowy or symbolic resemblance to zoe but only the sort of resemblance there is between a photo and a place a statue or a man a man who changed from having bios to having Zoe would have gone through as big a change as a statue which changes from being a carved stone into a real man. 
Okay, did you catch that? <laughs> this is the part where you have to you have to follow Lewis's logic here because this is so important. So he's trying to give the difference between Zoe and Bios. Okay. Bios has to be sure a certain shadowy or symbolic resemblance to Zoe, but only the sort of resemblance there is between a photo and a place. So if you're thinking about New York City, and I don't have a picture here, but if I had a picture of New York City, one is just a, is just a, um, how does he word it? A shadowy or symbolic resemblance. Okay. It's not the same thing. If you go to New York City and you look at New York City, that's the difference between, if I had a picture of New York City, that's the difference between Bios, the picture, and Zoe, the reality. Okay. A man who changed from having Bios to having Zoe would have gone through as big a change as a statue which changed from being a carved stone into a real man. And let me just pause here and say, this is exactly what Genesis teaches because it says that God created Adam, okay, took dirt, did what he did, literally created Adam because you know our bodies are, I mean, our bodies, when they decay, they go right back to dirt. So these physical bodies are dirt. They're refined dirt. But then it says, God breathed into Adam the breath of life. So from God came both Bios and Zoe. We, 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 were, we were made physical from the earth, but when God breathed into us, it brought us to life. And that breath literally, I mean, it's what Jesus said, unless a man is born again, that's, that's what happens when someone's born again. God's life comes in them. Um, and, and that's why it's called eternal life because it's God's life and it, and God is eternal. That is precisely what Christianity is about. This world is a great sculptor's shop. We are the statues and there is a rumor going around the shop that some of us are someday going to come to life. And I love that. I love how Lewis ends this kind of, he ends hanging. You know, he, he, um, he makes you think. He just provokes you and makes you think. So I'm going to end right there. Awesome chapter, bunch of cool stuff to come. Um, and I, and I do, I do just want to commend you for hanging in here because I know there's a lot of stuff, but it's all good. So we'll see you in the next chapter, which is, uh, what is our next chapter? The Three Personal God. The Three Personal God.